welcome back to the 2023 Pokemon Liverpool Regional Championships. My name is Ben Kiriaku, joined here on the desk by the wonderful Costa Didymos. And for all of you that have been tuning in throughout the weekend, we've made it to the finals and we have an absolute cracker of a match to show you. Trainers coming to the fray as well has been honestly really really exciting I think especially with the teams that we have come uh, coming through Luca uh, sort of a piloting that Murkrow and uh, Golden Go uh, of, of a combination as well as I think on the other hand we've got Alex going with full hard trick room and I think with an annihilate or something on the side yeah two teams <laughs> that really found their their footing early in this format of yeah. series one but kind of lost their way slightly. Not teams that we saw in the top cuts of San Diego too commonly, um, but you know, still a few of them present. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to see how they've managed to be, you know, present in this tournament yep. and make it to that final stage. I mean, you know, they're showing us why they were relevant in the early format and still are today. Well, exactly, and I think that's sort of what the meta does sometimes. It kind of cycles itself around as uh, there are a couple of different indications of, let's say, for example, you've got the initial example of Murkrow, Golden Go, and then Hard Trick Room. Like you mentioned, Ben, they did incredibly well. They started petering off. We started seeing more of the Dondozo, uh, Tatsugiri teams mm -hmm, mm -hmm. actually establish uh, better ways to handle those combinations. Right. So they started falling off the usage stats, and then we're starting to make the revolution once again <laughs> coming back, where it's like, actually, they're no longer checking for these stuff as often I'm just going to go ahead and bring it back. And both of these trainers have recognized that and have done incredibly well. And we'll have to see how they match up in the finals. But before we do that, let's take a little bit of a look at how these trainers have made it to uh, this finals through their top cut bracket. Yes, and we are going to be seeing, of course, Luca had to go up against Giovanni Piscitelli in the top eight and then was faced, of course, with Feist Ashfak, where we did actually go ahead and have that stream match uh, preview just before. Very, very tough opponents, very consistent mm. players as well. And uh, I think the team archetypes that they have been commandeering have been really, really nice. And Feist, of course, notably with that Dondozo Tatsugiri, but the Dondozo having that yawn capability and the sort of stall access. Whilst over on the other hand, we do have Alex finding his way through Claudio Giandomenico, uh, which of course had the Golden Go Murkrow as well. Um, uh, Francesco uh, Pardini in the semi-finals where Francesco was able to uh, pilot that Garden Knuckle quite nicely. Unfortunately, we didn't see a gastrodon from what Lou mm. uh, informed me about, which was uh, she was deeply saddened too. <laughs> right, gastrodon, one of the Pokemon that we were kind of looking forward to coming into this uh, tournament as a little bit of a meta pick yeah. uh, with the advent of all of the rain teams rising in popularity. Only one rain team making it through uh, to the top eight cut there uh, and unfortunately not making it through. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but there was, if you look at the top 32 cut, a lot of rain to contend with. Yes, there really was, and it makes a lot of sense. We had been talking about Gastrodon, honestly, the past couple of weeks, where it does make a lot of sense. Storm Drain being such a good ability, going into, like you mentioned, the surge of all of the rain teams. I think Palafin, as well as uh, Pelipper, and other sort of variants. I think we've also seen Dreadnor uh, doing really, really well, but kind of not able to do that much against a storm drain gastrodon especially because of its uh, stalling uh, capability uh, it has access to yawn recover as well as good good coverage in water ground and ice type moves yeah it's such a good pokemon and there's a lot of pokemon that you know are considered to be of the uh, sort of top uh, usage stats in this uh, particular tournament. Uh, we've got the players now getting set up on the field. Luca, of course, on the right-hand side with Alex on the left. And I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, how they're sort of going to be preparing for this matchup because when you look at these sort of team compositions that both of these players are bringing to this tournament, uh, Luca playing that Murkrow Goldengo, uh, with the Tatsugiri Dondozo combination is really very aggressive in its makeup. Alex, of course, playing an even more aggressive team, mm. arguably, 
deciding that the way that Alex wants to win is by setting up that trick room, doing lots and lots of damage yeah. uh, before the trick room ends and before you lose that speed advantage. One of the great things about Trick Room is that you can also invest in making your Pokemon take a lot of hits yep. as well as dish out a lot of damage. Well, exactly. Boltia as well as uh, quite a few Trick Room users available uh, for Alex's utility here. We've got Female Ndidi, Hatterain, as well as Armourage all having Trick Room. So, for example, if a, a Trick Room does expire and for whatever reason Alex does need to go immediately into it, at least he has three Pokemon, or another two, should I say, that he can re uh, rely on in hopping back into that mode. And on your screen now, you'll see a few achievements coming out from these players. Alex representing Spain on the left of your screen, top cutting worlds in 2022 with some great tournament finishes as well in the same year, getting to the runner-up position of the Bochum Regional Championships as well, way back in 2020. Luca, of course, representing the US on the right-hand side of your screen, getting that London Open top eight, and a couple of results in the seniors division in 2019. Yeah, and I think both of these trainers have a lot going for themselves. A lot of pressure. We have had um, a couple of discussions with them, both on the casting board with the uh, winner's interview, and uh, they're really, really hungry for it. They really want this, and they want to try to go ahead and make their staple on this format. I know, uh, for example, Alex was actually the first regional winner of the uh, Sword and Shield era, mm. looking, or should I say the finalist, apologies, and looking to actually get that record once again in Scarlet and Violet. And looking at his team coming out here, we've got the Annihilate Torco, Armourouge and Didi, Hatterene, and King Gambit with the <laughs> triple trick room setters coming out here, Armourouge, Ndidi and Hatterene, mm. two of which are boosted by damaging items there, talking about how aggressive that team is, yep. and also having some a lot of support with that follow me to be able to get the trick room up. Uh, and of course, that Choice Scarf Annihilate. We've seen so many Annihilate over the weekend, yeah. not many of these Choice Scarf variants, uh, most of them opting for more bulky variants and trying to get some boost mm -hmm. boost up that rage fist but that's not here yeah. this annihilates just looking to final gambit anything that it can help put its uh, get its teeth into yeah a lot of annihilates a lot of rage fist but none to be found in this final as we are going to be hopping over to the other side of the desk we've got luca's team as well i think we saw and we we're talking about with jamie in the previous match that natural cure on poor Mort being so, so valuable in uh, Lu Luca's uh, game too. Given the fact that you're able to incur a status ailment on yourself and quickly switch out, switch back in, not only do you get rid of the status, you also have fake out pressure and also the bait of going for revival blessing if your opponent anticipates that fake out. Right, and if they go for the protect or a little bit more of a defensive play to make yep. sure that they don't take any damage. Uh, looking at this team, again, stand out for me is the assault vest on the Dragonite mm -hmm. there. But there's also some interesting techs on there. The Murkrow having the quash, which... It's possible, although a little bit unlikely, actually, yeah. looking at the matchup, uh, that that comes into play uh, in this sort of trick room archetype. It will depend yeah. if the Indeedy on Alex's side does come into this match. But we'll have to see as they get set up and ready to uh, play their round uh, or game one in this finals of the Liverpool Regional Championships. As we are going to be getting into the action very shortly right now. It is quite difficult to not see that female in DD come out as <laughs> there it is right on cue uh, with its partner Pokemon Annihilate. Uh, whilst we are going to be seeing this match, this finals from uh, the perspective of Luca, uh, leading with Dondozo and Golden Go, as the female Ndidi is of course going to be getting a boost in its special defense, which is quite nice against this Golden Go with that Psychic Seed. Right, and now the Annihilate has got to make a little bit of a decision. Does it you turn out, and tr does uh, Alex trust the Ndidi to be able to survive these two hits with that Psychic Seed boost and be able to get the Trick Room? Uh, does Luca go for the Terror on the Golden Go and add a little bit more damage with that Steel-type Terror, uh, as well as the Dondozo, can it target into Ndidi? Uh, if it does, it'll become vulnerable to Final Gambit. 
It really, really will, as we're actually going to be seeing that interaction there. And the Shadow Ball does come out from the Golden Go, goes into the Annihilate, and oh, picks up that KO. Absolutely gets knocked out there without being able to utilize any sort of move interaction to has the Dondozo actually goes for the substitute here, will be setting itself up to take a couple of more uh, high pressing damage from this trick remote of which has now been set up. Right, and clever play there from both players. Uh, we, we <laughs> I, I just mentioned the Steel Tight yeah. Terror on the Golden Go, uh, knowing actually that this was a, a situation that happened in Alex's top eight, uh, top 16 match, apologies, against Sam Bentham, uh, catching that in game three and being able to uh, knock out the Golden Go in one. Now the uh, net gain of this turn for uh, Alex is that the trick room is up and Torkoal is on the field. Mm. That's kind of what you're going for when you get the final gambit, but this time no damage on Luca's side of the field. So really well played there by Luca, getting that Dondozo set up and not taking any damage. It really is, and I think given the fact that Dondozo does still have that water typing, it's quite nice. It hasn't terrestrialized into steel, which does mean it does, of course, resist this Torkoal. So it's not going to be quite easy to be able to handle it, especially if we see a Tatsugiri switch in. Mm, certainly not, but first we're going to have to watch the Indeedy going back to Alex and in favor of that Hatterene. Really nice read there as the Golden Go does switch out into that Tatsugiri you just mm. mentioned there, Costa, and it's going to be uh, activating its commander ability and raising the stats of this uh, Don Dozo on Luca's side of the field in readiness for a big big damaging attack coming out from this Torkoal. Well, exactly, and the Torkoal wants to try to go and break the substitute as best as possible, hence why Alex is looking to go for that terrestrialization of the fire type. Yes, of course, the Dondozo is a water type. Yes, of course, it does have that Omni Boost and the plus two in its special defense. However, this is the strongest option right now uh, for himself to try to go for it. He does attempt it. Will it be enough to break the substitute is the question. In order to allow this Torkoal to follow up with a clear smog, we see a lot of sparkles. We see the damage has been taken for the substitute, and it does Ooh. fade, which is very, very nice for Alex here, as we're going to be seeing that Dondozo go for the order up. It does deal respectable amounts of damage whilst getting a, a plus one in its attack there, boosting itself up to plus three. And the leftovers there really makes a lot of sense for this sort of Dondozo. We've seen leftovers being a very key item of use for this Pokemon. Right, but there's only like there's only three turns of Trick Room left here, and so you've got Torkoal on the field. Uh, it's likely that Don Dozo is going to protect against the clear smog that Luca knows uh, is able to be coming out from this Torkoal. So mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of time there to stall out that Trick Room. Of course, maybe it comes out next turn, but you clear smog before the order up goes off onto the field. So maybe you take a little bit of damage, yep. but you can still start recouping your boosts, and it's likely that Trick Room's gonna end fairly soon. Yeah, and the fact that Tatsugiri has been activating the commander ability and is now one for temporarily with that Dondozo means that Luca can't switch any Pokemon out. He is stuck in this pinch. And Torkoal being the fastest under Trick Room makes a lot of sense. You clear Smog all the stat boosts away. Hatteren, within the psych terrain and of course boosted by that life orb is going to be doing substantial amount of damage exactly that we'll see the clear smog coming out removing all of those boosts from dondozo so a neutral dondozo overall we'll have to see if this psychic is enough to oh! pick up the ko and it actually is oh my god that Hatterene oh. is taking no prisoners right now <laughs> that psychic as you said costa boosted by the life orb boosted by the psychic terrain was enough to pick up the KO on the Dondozo, and that is crucial for this matchup. Hatteran a bit frustrated that it hasn't been uh, getting that much usage ever since its uh, sword and shield days. It is coming out with a vengeance right now, showing why it is still a very good Pokemon to utilize within a hard trick room team. As Tatsugiri, Dragonite now versus Torkoal Hatteran. Right, and uh, you know, this uh, Dragonite we know is carrying the Assault Vest, therefore it can't protect, but the Assault Vest is the item that you would really want to be holding in this position. Luca definitely taking advantage of that in combination with Dragonite's typing 
uh, as well. It's going to be taking not very much damage. Of course, it is the inner focus ability, not the multi-scale. So we'll be taking full damage from the first hit. Yes, exactly that. Tortol, however, switching out for the female in DD. Now coming back onto its field, it is no longer able to reproc its Psychic Seed as that has already been used up during the leads. However, Dragonite going for the flying type there makes a lot of sense as this Hatteran may very well be tempted to go for that Dazzling Gleam, of which it does not. Psychic, however, being the move, dealing so much damage. Remember, ladies and gents, this is a Dragonite with an Assault Vest. That is a <laughs> lot of damage as we're going to be seeing Terra Blast there, boosted. Uh, not quite enough to pick up the KO there. Very powerful. However, even under the sun conditions, Muddy Water, first off, connects. Second off, does pick up the KO. Uh, yeah, as the trick room ends. So really nice timing here from uh, Luca being able to get all of that offensive pressure down onto the field as the trick room does end. We know that this uh, Torkoal isn't carrying Protect in favor of a couple of fire moves, Earth Power and Clear Smog. Mm. And so that's really susceptible to uh, really anything that uh, Luca wants to go for. We know that the Tatsugiri is locked into Choice Scarf, so likely it's going to be able to just click, keep on clicking Muddy Water could switch out to the Golden Go if it so chose, but Torkoal is the big threat on Ooh. the field here, and definitely Luca needs to be aware of knocking it out. Wow, that did a lot of damage, even in the sun, just paying uh, respects to how powerful this Tatsugiri really is, and Terra Blast in that combination of the double up will be more than enough to pick off this uh, Tortoll being, of course, the main predominant trick room sweeper. I'm talking about trick room, female Ndidi does set it up. However, we know for a fact weather is just about to end and there is no longer any capability for Alex to get Psychic Terrain going. The female Ndidi is on its own. It is, and with Dazzling Gleam, the only method of doing damage for this Indeedy may be able to get itself through the Dragonite. Uh, maybe maybe not with that damage, no, actually, no, 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 unfortunately, no, no. <laughs> uh, for the Indeedy. Um, yeah, there's still the Golden Go in the back, and uh, that really didn't take any damage in the early game. So uh, more than an uphill battle here as we see the Terror Blast coming in from the Dragonite, followed up by the Muddy Water, and Luca Paz is going to win the first game of this finals. Luca Paz, game one winner. One game away from becoming the regional champion of the 2023 uh, largest European event. So uh, in this situation, of course, we saw that the Annihilate then went out straight away in the turn one. That was quite tough uh, for Alex. He doesn't have that many resources available since it's already a four versus three deficit. So in this situation, I'm not 100% convinced Annihilate was a really good bring. It, it makes a lot of sense depending on which variation of uh, lead Luca decides to go for. However, you want to try to have multiple Trick Room users available if you expect Luca to be able to outlast your first Trick Room setup. Right, and like, you know, when you're using Final Gambit on Annihilate, you're, you're effectively making a trade. You're saying like, okay, I'm gonna lose my Pokemon, no problem but you're also going to lose a Pokemon or at least a lot of health. Mm. Dondozo, a Pokemon with, oh, really, one of, the, one of the few Pokemon in the format with enough health to be able to survive that final gambit from Annihilate. Yep. Um, so, you know, if we saw it the other way around and that Dondozo took a big hit from the final gambit mm -hmm. and went down to low health, Mm -hmm. uh, the Shadow Ball would have gone into the Ndidi, done absolutely no damage whatsoever. Trick Room would have gone up. Yep. Substitute probably would have failed on the Dondozo, mm. and then Torkoal still comes in. So, like, it's a completely different game if the yep. targeting is different. And it's all about those early game reads when you're using Annihilate as to how the game progresses. Yeah, and I think it's quite tough because, like you uh, very well pointed out there, the fact that there are a couple of different options that you can go with with that female Ndidi and Annihilate lead means that your opponent really has to read into all of the different uh, versions and variants of which you can go for. However, we are going to be starting game two as we do have a change up of leads, at least on Alex's side, bringing that Armor Rouge instead of the Annihilate uh, paired up by that female Ndidi versus Luca's same leads, Golden Go and the Dondozo.
Mm, and I like this switch up here. Armor Rouge has the option to go for a grass type terror and resist the wave crash that would otherwise uh, stop it from being able to set up Trick Room. But of course, there is also the option for uh, the Indeedy to just go for the Trick Room. Maybe a, a, a little bit of a switch out there from the Armor Rouge, yep. not being able to protect one of uh, quite a few Pokemon on Alex's team, actually, that don't carry the protect option. No, exactly that. As Follow Me instead coming out this turn, Make It Rain will be dealing good amount of damage onto that armorage thanks to the critical hit, of course. Of, it will be dropped down to minus one of its special attack as Don Dozo once again will be getting that substitute set up. And armorage is just going to set up the Trick Room here. Doesn't want to go for damage just yet. No, this is like a little bit of a telegraph play there. The substitute was almost always going to be the move of choice for Luca because it allows the Dondozo to get through the Trick Room much, much more effectively. Uh, but you still want to do the follow me because uh, at the end of the day, you can't click Trick Room with both Pokemon if you expect both Pokemon to survive because you're not going to get into Trick Room. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that as we're going to be seeing the female and Didi switch out for the Torkoal, which is quite interesting. We know that the Golden Go is stuck, is locked into that choice spec of Make It Rain. Dondozo going for Protect here. So Alex looking to punish a passive turn from Luka. Makes a lot of sense. Expanding Force does come out. Of course, Golden Go does resist psychic type moves. However, this is Twisted Spoon powered. A uh, psychic terrain powered gold uh, armor rouge, which is going to be dealing a lot of damage with that expanding force and does not drop to that make it rain, most importantly. No, not at all. And yet, I, I'm unclear here whether Alex is really making too much progress. Uh, Luca seems to be able to get that substitute up and make sure that they're in a position where they're not taking too much damage and just keep stalling out those trick room turns. With the armor rouge on such low health, mm. Alex could. Uh, potentially make a little bit of a read later in the game and do that double trick room to get back into trick room, reset the amount of turns. But with such low health, it's really difficult to do. Uh, and now you're with the uh, Torco coming in, maybe expecting for that substitute not to be in play on the Domdozo so you can get a little bit of a clear smog mm -hmm. and press the advantage that way. Instead, Golden Go manages to get a lot of damage and that substitute is still just as healthy as it was the last time. It really is and being able to have Protect available to yourself just further extends that longevity of uh, ticking down the remaining amount of turns of Trick Room. Uh, Tatsugiri switch in there it is a bit telegraphed but makes a lot of sense. It just makes that Don Dozo even bulkier. And Torkoal cannot go ahead and get that clear smod going due to the substitute being present, uh, which we know is quite crucial in Alex's strategy in trying to nullify this Don Dozo's bulk as well as attack. Right, and the terror coming out from the Torkoal here, gonna be that fire terror again. With the eruption not being at full power, the question mark is whether or not it's gonna be enough on this occasion to be able to knock out the substitute on Don Dozo. Here it comes, we'll have to see the amount of damage it does taking damage but not Ooh. fading so expanding force is going to have to finish the job here and going to be breaking that substitute in readiness for the next turn where Torkoal can uh, try to get that clear smog onto the Don Dozo so here we go substitute breaking wave crash coming in boosted by oh. all of that Tatsugiri action and it is going to be enough to pick up the knockout on that Torkoal. It really is and all of a sudden you see Alex's terrestrialization option is now out of this game too. Torkoal being a very powerful uh, trick room sweeper however this Don Dozo proving to out bolt <laughs> its capability <laughs> and the fact that we have the substitute set up so early on doesn't allow for the clear mod to go through. So you always have to try to break it as much as possible if you're Alex. Right, but now it's a, uh, an expanding force and psychic. We saw the psychic do like 70, 80% to it without those boosts in play. Uh, therefore, like 35, 40% would be fairly uh, reasonable to uh, see. But that order up coming out onto the armor rouge Ooh. and knocking it out before anything else could move. Yeah, this is a turning point indeed, as there was no Trick Room available, hence why Hatterin did want to go for it. And in this scenario, I think we've just got to take into consideration the fact that Hatterin, even though it has a very high damage output at the moment, 
this Dondozo is just powered up. It is having a good, good time. Right, and uh, yeah, that substitute is really the thing that changes this uh, this matchup and flips it on its head because usually without the substitute, it wouldn't be able to, you know, have this sort of longevity through the trick room, but also wouldn't be able to block things like clear smog. And we saw that against the Moongus in previous rounds of the Swiss Feluca. So really great team building there, just using the Dondozo at this current point in the format yeah. that is the most effective. Oh, uh, we're gonna be seeing the Dragon Terrestrialization of the Dondozo roaring with uh, outrageous pressure onto Alex's Pokemon. Follow me comes out from the Indeedy. Is this enough? However, with the plus three at in attack, Dondozo pick up KO. Of course it is, and it's gonna give itself an additional boost in attack prior to going and uh, essentially beating this Hatterene to the point where it could go ahead and actually win this game for Luca. Do you know what? There was something that we missed in the uh, previous turns. It looked like the Armor Rouge and the Hatterene were going for a double trick room there. We were already in trick room. That's what I thought. I was a little bit uh, that, I, yeah, I, I was, was a, a little bit thrown well. off there. <laughs> I was like thinking, hang on a second, this Dondozo is going first. I'm sure we're in trick room here. <laughs> but yeah, it was a double trick room, reduced priority. Okay. That makes and sense. Uh, Luca correctly made that prediction with the two trick room setters on the field. Uh, and that's why you see multiple trick rooms coming out into into this game. Uh, Hattery undid the trick room now, had to reset it up to have any chance here. Not only uh, does trick room twist the dimensions, it twists our minds of being <laughs> able to pick up on what is going on. So uh, in this situation, I think the Dondozo is just too, too powerful to be able to deal with if you're Alec. Dazzling Gleam dealing very respectable amounts of damage there. Of course, Life Orb boosted. However, Wave Crash looks like it's going to be clinching this win for Luca Paz, who is your 2023 regional champion of uh, this season, Video Game Championships. Yeah, exactly. Winning this Liverpool Regional Championships. What a result for Luca, a player that has only managed to get to the top eight in previous tournaments of any regional so far, making their way all to the fi all the way to the finals and clinching the victory and doing it with such style. I mean, look yeah. at the uh, amount of work that Don Dozo did with that substitute here. It didn't feel like Alex really had too many ways to deal with that. It was close in the first game. We had the uh, substitute broken. We had the clear smog coming out from that Torkoal and the Dondozo knocked out, but too many Pokemon in the back for uh, Alex to be able to deal with. And the second game, all of those trick rooms uh, added up, unfortunately, yeah. uh, for Alex to be in Luca's favor. Yeah, and I think what a way to go about it. Um, it is tough when you're going up against a hard trick room team, naturally speaking, but the fact that you had both a uh, burst damage available with the gold dango uh, as a uh, golden go as a lead as well as a substitute play to punish the pass uh, passiveness of trick room being set up or even let's say a final dambit user being available we know that dondozo won't be going down however that could have been a real option perhaps for even um uh, alex to take into consideration game two but mm. it's quite tough because we saw how game one turn one paid out um and in that scenario it, uh, you don't expect Luca to go for Shadow Ball again. Just going to be going for the Make It Rain or just some sort of damage whilst allowing the Dondozo to sort of maneuver its, uh, itself around the Trick Room. Right, and it, you know, it is all about those reads, especially at this final stage of the tournament where these players are aware of all of the options, yeah. boosted by these open team sheets to allow them to uh, see what options their opponent has available. Yep. That's both raising the stakes, raising the quality, of the games that we see and also raising the level of prediction mm. just one level higher because they know what to expect uh, then it's all about your execution yep. how do you get into trick room if you're alex mm -hmm. and how do you make sure that you survive the trick room if you're luca well yeah and it's also about capitalizing off of trick room as best as possible we're just in a situation where alex couldn't get his main uh, damage output out in the sort of order and structure that he right. really would have liked because of that substitute being set up, because Tatsugiri was such an easy switch in after the Gold Dango just deals whatever damage it does prior to Trick Room being set up. It, it just makes so much sense. There's no immediate um, uh, Pokemon that could get rid of those boosts, allowing the combination of Protect, 
leftovers and the additional bolt from Commander just being too much and out bolting quite literally Trick Room. <laughs> Completely that. What, what great team building and what great execution in these finals. So without further ado, of course, we have these players wrapping up right now. We're going to be cutting to a very short break, but we've got a little bit of a, uh, a ceremony uh, to be looking forward to on the stage with these two players, both our winner, Luca, and our runner up from the Liverpool Regional Championships, Alex Soto. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello Pokemon trainers and welcome back for the very final time here at the 2023 Pokemon Liverpool Regional Championships. We have just crowned our champion, Luca Paz. Luca, come and join me on the stage. Congratulations, an absolutely fantastic tournament throughout the entirety of this weekend. How are you feeling after winning the championship? Uh, really good, obviously. Um, I tried my hardest to win. I came here thinking I could cut and I ended up winning which is always good yeah. Yeah, it was an ab absolutely fantastic run congratulations you were one of the players that was running the classic Tatsugiri and Zondozo combination why did you think that this obviously was the call for this tournament um, I think just that you know getting plus two in all stats is really oppressive and sometimes people think oh I have like Haze Murkrow to deal with this or clear smog but I don't think that's the best way to stop Dondozo like you need you need to attack it you can't just stop it like that so I feel like it was it's a really good uh, combination and with the partners I chose like Goldengo and um, especially the Dragonite and Murkrow and Palmok, uh the whole team is just uh, really good yeah and yeah, really good synergy yeah absolutely and it was clearly showing that throughout this tournament just a few questions about the final a very risky play coming out from Alex with the final gambit into the Golden Go were you expecting that play because you also made a quite a risky play of the substitute and the shadow ball into the Annihilate that wouldn't have affected the Ndidi so yeah. were you aware that that was the play he was going to go for um I thought he would u-turn uh and trick room so u-turn wouldn't really do much damage to either so um and whatever's coming in would get hit by a really strong shadow ball and in, into either super effective Hat Rain, uh, Armor Rouge, or Torkoal, which doesn't have great um, special defense. So, and Substitute is uh, pretty much like what I thought would help me win that game. Just uh, being under Substitute and him having to attack me to clear smog me instead of just clear smog. Yeah, absolutely. We did see the Substitute being very, very impactful on that Dondozo as well. And in that second game as well, getting behind the Substitute, trying to store out the Trick Room turns, he went for that double Trick Room. You did call that very, very nicely. How were you feeling after you saw that he did actually go for that double Trick Room play? Uh, I was pretty relieved. Um, in the case that he didn't go for it and he went for a double up, I felt like I could live it. But if I didn't, um, I had Dragonite in the back, which also shouldn't die for my double up. And... Um, also Goldengo, which were all pretty much, I think, at full health. So I thought I was, it was okay to go and make that risk. Yeah, and it absolutely paid off. And now you are, of course, the champion of the Pokemon Liverpool Regionals. Uh, just before we are going to conclude and give you your prizes, are there any final shout-outs you want to give to anyone? Uh, yeah, um, Apron, Mirai, Benbuild, Arekru, Dalmar, uh, Clippers, Helios, everyone who pretty much motivated me said I could do it. Um, Copers, uh, VGC memes, um, all the teams I'm a, a part of, like USPA, Winter League. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you for a fantastic tournament run. Very, very good to watch indeed. We can now present you with your prizes, with your championship medal. Congratulations once again for winning the Pokemon Liverpool Regional 2023. And thank you so much for watching as well. It has been a fantastic tournament from myself, from Ben Kiriakou, from our other co-casters, Costa Didymos and Lou Akjos Kromi. It has been an absolutely wonderful tournament. And we are looking very much forward to seeing you again once again in the Pokemon Bokum Regional Championships in February. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>